My name is uh, Mikkel here, Newport, Mayo. Uh, I was born and raised in Newport in the middle, uh, going back 1937. 37. Uh, the time, the year, oh, the last train passed from Westport Tech. And uh, last year I was born. And what was it like in Newport when you were a young fellow? Was there, was there much to do? Yes, we had, uh, there was pretty, oh, there was pretty to do that time, right? You know, in the line of, the fun now weren't in the line of work. In the line of fun? In the line of fun that time, right? You know, you wouldn't be, well, there was, yeah, we'd be doing things in times hard, you wouldn't be doing now, like, you know. We played lots, lots of handball that time. Mm. So very, very strong. Mm. Then maybe Sunday mornings after Mass, we'd have to, uh, we'd be a pitching task we'd have. We call that firing the coppers onto the bar, you know. Was that but, legal? At the time, no problem, but it's a little now. At that time, it's quite yeah. legal to know. As far as I know, like, you know. And now, since then, you want to be in the rest of it, like, you know. Yeah. But I used to pass, pass the time, like, you know. And that time, especially on a Sunday, like, you know, the, uh, the matches would be on the uh, football matches would be on Sunday. And, um, like, everything, the radios wouldn't be that, uh, they'd be scarce enough. And Did you have a radio? We had a radio, all right, like, mm. but you'd always maybe gather up at some house, uh, maybe it's happy in the town there, and say, if you have to have a uh, a game of pitch and toss, like you know, you might wait on for the match, especially if we all was involved and they'd be listening to, to the radio. You might, the house would be so full of people that like, you'd be outside listening to the window, of course, the window would be open to see how, how the football was going. <laughs> yeah, there was, there were, yeah. And who was giving the commentary that time? Well, that time, the first kind of me here. Yeah. He, he was the, he was the, uh, the man that was commentary that time. He was very popular, man. He was very popular, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. yeah. And did you play football yourself? Yes, I played football, uh, but I shoot. Borisfield. And uh, we formed the Borisfield team in 1950s. Were you involved in that, were you? I was very much involved in it. I was uh, after the I was I was chairman for quite a number of years, and I was captain of the Borisfield team for uh, three or four years. We won the the West uh, two years in succession. In 19, 1966, we uh, won the intermediate county intermediate championship. Where did you call it, Borisfield? Borishul is part of Newport and Moreni, and it, that's the Abbey. It's called, it's known as the Borishul. It's about two miles outside Newport. Okay. So I've gone back years ago, and that, that's where our church was for the parish, right? our main church, you know. Yeah. So Moreni and Newport become under the name of the Borishul. So it was kind of a geographic decision to cover yeah. cover the whole area, yeah. That would be it, all right, you know. It's a pretty established club now, isn't it? Apparently it's it's all it's very good, yeah. And where did you go to school? I went to school in Newport. In Newport, yeah. In Newport, yeah. Mm. And that's been a while in my sport. The brothers of my sport have been a couple of years mm. also there. Well, where was the convent in Newport at the time? Yeah, so it was up there uh, uh, at the uh, back of the I main church there on the hill there, in Barrick Hill, like, you know. Now it's, uh, it's turned into um, uh, people that are living up there. The Western Care, is it? Old folks and so on. Uh, well, Western Care uh, did have a part of it, right? They had built uh, two houses up there. Western here, the pairs of it all right, you know. Mm. But there is other flats and homes for, for, for older people that uh, reside there. Did you spend all your life in Newport? Did you ever go to England working or? No, I never went to England. Work, no, I always spent my whole life in uh, um, Ireland, and yeah. of course I was farming for, for years, most part of my life. So you saw the big changes happening in farming, did it? Yes, big changes happening in farming, is right, you know. What kind of, what were the biggest changes you over the years? I know there are lots of changes, but. There were lots of changes like the terms of the time that you, we had to get all our cattle tested for TB because at the time was, uh, the country was raising with um, with, uh, with TB and so on. So it's a thing that had to, all the cattle had to be uh, tested for TB and bushel doses and cattle had to be tagged and then we, had, we were issued, we had to carry blue cars if we were going to send the cattle and get that, you'd have to have all these blue cars which had to, so they could be recognised, you know, especially when they'd be going to the factory to be killed, you know. And when did all that when did all that kick in? Oh, that kicked in in the uh, I'm not sure, but I think it would be in the um, it would be fifties, sixties, sixties, I think. Sixties, I think. Sixties, I know that time. Yeah. Was there much TB down Newport that time? Can you remember talk about TB? Not too bad. There was always a little there, pox here and there. Was no. Hmm. And. You got into a bit of running at some stage of your career? Yes, and in the, in the 80s I started, um, the Dublin Marathon uh, started in 1980 and I uh, decided that I might, um, I'd like to 
give it a go. So in 1981, I, my first marathon in Dublin was 1981, and I ran nine full double, nine uh, full marathons, and I done one full marathon in Cork. And then, of course, I was involved in cycling. The Mara cycle is known as from Dublin to Belfast, go up and maybe on a Friday, come down on the, on the Saturday morning, you'd have the cyclists from Northern Ireland coming down, so they would stay in Dublin that mm -hmm. night, then, you know, and they would go back on Saturday. And the year after then, they come down on the Friday, and we go up on the Saturday, and we stay above, you know, and we come back on Sunday, like, you know. But the marathons and the cycle, all these were for charity. Mm -hmm. And how did you get involved in that? Like, it was unusual for a farmer. Well, I was all, all, always involved in sport. I loved sport. Right. And fitness. I was all playing football, mm. handball. Mm. And uh, I used to lot of, lot, quite a bit of lawn tennis, table tennis. And then um, before I started uh, running, we uh, had a chuck war team in Newport. And that was formed in the 19. Um, uh, 73 or 4. So in 1978, we won in all Ireland. I and remember. That was a great achievement, I think. I remember that. In all Ireland, in any sport. Who was on that team that time? Well, of course, that time it would be Tommy and Matty. He's still alive now. He's still alive. He's coming up in, I think he's 96, 97 years old, like, no? And he was, a, he was a great coach, you know? And uh, more, uh, I'd say nearly they're all, they're still around a lot of them. Like John Joe Garrett, you know, would be on Joe Reed, you had, you had um, the Gary Ferkus, you know, a few years old, older than me, he's still, he's still knocking around. And Bertie Cam Michael, Jim Jordan, you had Martin Hughes, um, and um, the Morton Morden Brothers, and Martin O'Malley. Yeah. There's a couple of, there's a famous photograph of that yeah, team around, isn't there? Yeah, it was a great team that time. There were lots of work involved in, in training, like in the world of football. You had to spend nights and nights lifting this uh, barrel up on the heist, you know. That was a barrel of concrete, wasn't it? Concrete, yeah, full barrel of concrete. What weight was it? Oh, like, do you know, you know, it's what you wouldn't yeah, know. It, it, at least a half a ton, I've seen that. Yeah. Half a ton, yeah. Yeah. So then you got into the music, or were you always into the music? Well, and the dancing, in, in, sorry, in the early, in very early, of course, when I was young, I used to do a bit of uh, dancing, a bit of step dancing, a bit of swimming dancing, and uh, uh, she's a business. And back in the in the in the in, in the fifties, I suppose that would be in the house house dancers. And then the, later on, in, in uh, the step dancing came in, got very strong in in the eighties. Like, and I suppose uh, my memory would be a Connie Ryan. Of course, he's not with us today. He passed away there in nineteen ninety seven. He was a great teacher in the modern. Pat Murphy, you know, passes with the, uh, uh, doing a great job of sit dance. Of course, you have other teachers around the country also, like, you know, but Pat is, uh, I think, is um, just um, one of the best, like, you know, and uh, man I uh, have known for years, and he's been very helpful to me and get music and so mm -hmm. on, and he's a great man for teaching, getting sets from all over the country, like, and... Um, but now you're a teacher yourself, aren't you? Well, I do a bit of teaching myself, just so I do a few classes in the week here and there, like, you know, just mm. to keep out, keep the tradition there, like, you know, it's not that, not that I'm in for the money, like, you know, of course, if you get a few bob to pay for the expenses, that's just, that's mm. just me, mm. like, you know. Mm. The joy I mean, that's just all about, meeting the people, which is very important, oh, having right, the right. fun, having the crack, and mm. making them happy, having them smile. Good for your fitness. It's great, it's mm. great exercise, I find it great exercise, there's no doubt about it, like, you know. Mm. Like when you go to some of these cages, like you'll always bring a few shots with you because like it was with the heat and with all the tension to it. After maybe two or three sets you'd have to change into your mm. your way, like, you know. So of course you have the towel with you too, like, you know? mm. So you're down in Mulrenny today, you've had a But down here in Mulrenny today, there's a back our back to our annual yearly workshop here in Mulrenny and and um it's just I think there's about a forty in Mulrenny and uh a lovely venue and we have people from all over the world. All of that. I think you're from Japan, Japan out there. Japan, a Japan, lot of people from England, model. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely venue, and it's, uh, the tales are they're, they're very, very, uh, very helpful, and they do a great job. And 